Well, I know there are a lot of lenses out there and it can be very hard to decide what are the best lenses to buy, especially if you are just starting out. And since a lot of you guys have been asking me questions about lenses, I thought I would share with you not only the prime lenses that I use for my video and photography work, but also why I use them, in which situations I choose to use them, my long-term experience using these lenses, and I will also share with you guys some example footage and photography from each lens that I'm going to talk, so you can see the difference between them and hopefully help you guys decide what are the best options for you. What's up you guys, Vitor Pinhão here, welcome back to my channel and in today's video I'm going to talk about the best prime lenses that I use for Micro Four Thirds camera systems, which in my case these are lenses that I use with my Panasonic Lumix G7 and my Panasonic GH5 cameras. And I'm gonna share with you three different prime lenses. One ultra-wide lens, one standard mid-range lens, and one telephoto portrait lens. Also, just to let you guys know, I will leave links in the description below for these lenses if you guys want to go check them out. And those are affiliate links, meaning that if you click on one of my links and make a purchase, I will earn a small commission with no additional cost to you. But first, I want to say thank you so, so much for being here watching these videos. I don't know if you guys noticed, but in the last month alone, we actually grew more than 500 subscribers on this channel, like, that's crazy. I never thought in my life that so many of you guys would want to see my videos, and I'm very, very happy to see all of you guys here lately hanging out with me. And if you are new here, hit that like button, consider subscribing to the channel and go ahead and say hi in the comment section because I do try my best to respond to all of you guys. All right, so let's dive right into the lenses. Number one is the Lawa 7.5 mm f2. And this lens will give you a full frame equivalent of 15 mm when we use it in Micro Four Thirds cameras. So this is an ultra wide angle lens and I bought this lens at the end of 2018 so it has been in my kit for about two and a half years now. And I bought this lens mainly because I was looking for a rectilinear ultra wide angle lens that I could use for real estate, for landscape photography and video and for a more general establishing shots and things like that to give that ultra wide feeling to my work. And since I wanted a rectilinear and not fisheye lens I ended up getting this one and I'm very very happy with it. One thing to take in mind though is that this lens is completely manual, so there is no electronic control over the aperture or focus, so you will need to actually use the focus and aperture rings directly on the lens because you will not be able to do it on the camera. For me this is not a deal breaker at all because I never use autofocus within my video production anyways. And because this is an ultra wide angle lens, things tend to be in focus all the time. As long as I set the lens to infinite focus and my subject is about 4 meters or more away from the camera, everything will be in focus. And there are a lot of things I love about this lens. I love how small, lightweighted and robust this lens is. The build quality is quite impressive. And because it's such a small lens, this is actually a great lens to use not only for travel, but also to use on a gimbal. It is very sharp and having an f2 aperture means that you can use this lens for low light situations and that's always a great plus when you're dealing with micro four thirds cameras. And another thing I love about this lens is that you can use it almost as a macro lens. I mean you can get really really close to your subject and still be able to focus. And when you take some close up shots with this lens and have the aperture wide open all the way to f2 you will be able to get really cool interesting and creative shots. The only thing I don't like about about it is the warping effect that it creates around the edges because this is an ultra wide angle lens. So you have to be a little bit careful not to do some crazy movements with your camera when you're using this lens because you will start to notice some wobbling effect around the edges of your footage. But as long as you do some slower movements, everything is going to be fine. And in order to avoid this issue completely, I definitely recommend using this lens on a gimbal. So I use this lens for things like real estate video, landscape and traveling, as well as for capturing some establishing shots on my video productions. And because it's such an ultra wide angle lens, I use it as well for capturing some creative shots. Overall, I think this is a great ultra wide angle lens. And I put a link in the description below for this lens if you guys want to check it out.
All right, the next lens is called Smash the 50 mm like button f1.7 in this video. <laughs> no, seriously. The next lens is called the Lumix 20 mm f1.7 pancake lens. And this lens will give you a full frame equivalent of 40 mm when you use it in micro four thirds cameras. So it is kind of mid-range standard focal length lens and this one is one of my all-time favorite lenses to use. I bought it early in 2018, so it has been in my kit for about three years now and I bought this lens mainly because at the time I only had the kit lens which was very limited and the image quality was not that good. And I wanted a faster lens that could give me the ability to capture more professional images with a shallower depth of field. Needless to say that this is the best investment that I did in my filmmaking career so far and I instantly fell in love with this lens. And it's safe to say that the majority of my work so far was shot using this particular lens. And there are a lot of things I love about this lens. Having an f1.7 aperture, this lens will let in a lot of light and it will give you a very nice bokeh and shallow depth of field, making your life a lot easier, not only when you're trying to get that nice blurry background, but also for low light situations. And I like the fact that it's very small, lightweighted, and the focal length is 20 millimeters, meaning 40 millimeters full frame equivalent, which is not too wide, but not too narrow either, making this lens the perfect choice, in my opinion, to use with a gimbal. It is a very, very sharp lens, even at 1.7 aperture. I'm telling you, the sharpness of this lens is absolutely crazy. It is definitely one of the sharper lenses I've seen so far. Another thing I love about this lens is the image quality. This thing can capture very high quality footage and photos. And for me, coming out of only using the kit lens, I noticed a massive difference in image quality when I tried this lens for the first time. It is not a macro lens, but you can get very closely to your subject and still be able to focus. So that's another plus about this lens. The only thing I don't like is that it doesn't have image stabilization. But other than that, I think this is a great option. So because it is a mid-range standard focal length lens, I use it a lot on a gimbal, but also for run and gun filmmaking, for traveling, and really everything else actually, because this is such a versatile lens. Overall, I think this is a great lens, and for me, it offers the best value for the money. Again, I will leave a link in the description below for this lens if you guys want to check it out. I just want to take a quick moment to ask you guys if you are finding this video valuable and helpful, please hit that thumbs up. That really helps this channel and this video out. And if you are not subscribed, hit that subscribe button and that bell down below. But let's get back to the video. All right, moving on to number three, we have the Lumix 42.5 millimeters f1.7 and this lens will give you a full frame equivalent of 85 millimeters when we use it in micro four thirds cameras. So this is a telephoto portrait focal length lens. I bought it in the middle of 2019, so it has been in my kit for about two years now and I bought this lens mainly because at the time I already had the Laowa 7.5 mm f2 as my ultra wide angle lens and I also had the Lumix 20 mm f1.7 as my standard focal length lens. And I really wanted to complete my kit with a portrait focal length lens that could give me the possibility to not only isolate my subjects and get those detailed shots where everything is compressed, but also for capturing some cool b-roll for my videos. And there are a lot of things I love about this lens. It is image stabilized. So when you have a telephoto portrait lens like this with a focal length like 85 millimeters full frame equivalent, it is usually very hard to capture smooth motion footage. And even if you are very careful while recording your videos, camera shake can be introduced and you will notice those micro jitters on your videos for sure. So having image stabilization within this lens is awesome and it will definitely help you to get that smooth motion footage for your videos. It is very small and lightweighted, making it perfect to use it on a gimbal and also 
to easily fit it in your camera bag. Not only that, but it is also very sharp and has an f1.7 aperture. And combining that with the fact that this is a telephoto portrait lens with 85mm full frame equivalent focal length, you will be able to really isolate your subjects from the background, making this lens an absolute bokeh and shallow depth of field beast that will give you that awesome blurry and compressed background. Furthermore, you will also be able to use it for low light situations due to the fact that it has an f1.7 aperture. From all the lenses that I own, this is probably the lens that gives me the most professional and high quality image overall. I'm telling you, I don't know what it is, but I really like the image quality that this lens is able to deliver. You can get very closely to your subjects and still be able to focus, even though this is not a macro lens. And having this possibility on a telephoto portrait lens like this, it's huge, because you will be able to really get those perfect and professional B-roll or detailed shots. So I use this lens whenever I'm doing product video and photography, as well as for portraits, when I really wanna isolate my subjects from the background. This is also my go-to lens for capturing b-roll and little details and also for photography in general and for some creative shots as well. Overall I think this is a great and powerful lens and after thinking about it I didn't find anything that I didn't like about this one. Again I will leave links in the description below for this lens if you guys want to check it out. So there you go guys, these are the three Micro Four Thirds Prime lenses that I use with my Panasonic Lumix G7 and my Panasonic GH5 cameras. So as of right now in my video productions and photography work, I only use these three prime lenses that I share with you guys together with my main zoom lens, which is the Sigma 18 to 35 f1.8 and that is the lens that I'm filming this video. And the purpose of this video was to not only share with you the lenses that I use, but also to try to help you guys decide what are some of the best Micro Four Thirds lenses out there for your work as well. So yeah, I would love to hear your thoughts about these three lenses and I'm curious to know what are some of the lenses that you guys use as well. So go ahead and leave a comment below, I would love to hear your thoughts. And that's it guys, I really really hope you liked this video, I hope you find it helpful, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, smash that like button because that really helps this channel and if you like the look of my videos then be sure to click on this video right over here where I talk about the camera settings that I use for cinematic video and I will see you guys over there. Bye bye!